Hello, hello everyone! Today I will be featuring the Baiji. The Baiji is basically almost identical to the Izumo, and Izumo was a ship that was requested. This, the difference is, is that Baiji reloads 2 seconds slower than the Izumo, 32 to 30 seconds, but in return the Baiji has 2.1 Sigma instead of Izumo's 2.0. So, extremely slightly, slightly better accuracy at the cost of some reload. Baiji also has some um, extra range, but considering Izumo's range is 21.7, it doesn't really matter, and it actually comes at the cost of having a slower gun traverse, which I actually consider a pretty poor trade-off, because I would rather have 21.7k range and the faster tur tur traverse. Regardless, this is another positioning-based game. And the first thing I do upon realizing that I have a Yamato on my flank is once again I move towards the center position. They do however have a carrier, so I do have to keep in mind that I don't overextend too hard in the, in the start of the match. Because if I do, obviously a carrier can make your life extremely uncomfortable, especially if you're playing an IGN battleship, because your AA is so incredibly lacking. However, he has other things to worry about like uh, the Kagero in the center and the Kurforst and so forth. Izumo, just like Baiji, has some of the best pen uh, at tier 9, which means that if you do catch ships giving flat broadside, like in this case, and RNG does actually favor you, well, you can in fact punish the ships. Keep in mind though, this is something that I, I, got, a, I got a fair bit of feedback, a lot positive, but there was some negative aspects as well. Uh, in fact, one guy complained that, well, his entire team went, uh, has probably watched one of my vids, because they all sailed to the center of the map, and then they got surrounded and killed. And, <laughs> obviously, uh, I'm not sure if I really have to spell it out to you guys, but the whole point of going to the center is creating crossfires. If I wouldn't have this Yamato, on the flank, then obviously this crossfire wouldn't exist. Both those battleships could just push up straight towards me, nose in, and this position would be far, far weaker. The whole point of these positioning-based vids, especially me with me favoring the center position, is that ships normally tend to go towards the flanks. This is like 99 out of 100 times the ships will go towards the flanks. Now, there are situations where the ships will instead go to the center, and in those cases, you might actually want to be the guy who goes to the flank to create the crossfire. The, the fundamental point of going where I am right now is to get with the Yamato, with the help of the Yamato, instead of making life easy for these two ships where they can just angle against both of us at the same time, I'm creating this, well, ba basically triangle, if you look at the minimap. I'm on the same level as the Yamato, but I'm creating enough of an angle that I get to shoot broadsides, and he who can overmatch instead gets to shoot the nose-in ships, which he can easily punch through with those 460mm guns. Now, this should be pretty straightforward. Uh, I am accelerating, reversing, accelerating. The reason for this is that there was an Ognevoi spotted in the center, and there is a risk that there's a DD here. Uh, and note that I take breaks between shooting, like now, and this is where it's very important to realize, are you spotted or not? If I was spotted right now, I would be accelerating and getting behind this island. But because I'm undetected, it means that the Ognevoi has not yet pushed up through the gap, which means I still have some relative safety before there's any risks of torpedoes coming in. I'm waiting very patiently for the Sovetsky Soyuz to give a bit too much broadside, and I do kill him off. This is very, very important if you don't know where the enemy deities are. Use your own concealment against them. It will give you early warning. Angling so that the Montana's AP mostly bounces off my armor and does very little damage. It appears that he's trying to push up and brawl my Yamato. So obviously I won't let the I do not want to let the Montana get away with this, and I do want to abuse this crossfire as much as I can to kill him off before he can kill off my Yamato. Hopefully my Yamato understands what his goals are, either to brawl or even to ram, so he will start reversing, which will of course make my crossfire even better and the angle at which I can harass him even steeper. This is things that we've gone through in the previous in the previous commentaries. Very pretty basic battleship stuff. Uh, keep an eye, don't overextend too early in the match so the carrier doesn't single you out. Make sure that if you don't have information of what's in front of you, like in this case, uh, make sure to use your concealment as a tool to make sure that the DD isn't taking any shots at you. 
And for example, right now, I'm only plain detected. You see that? So I know the Ognavoy still hasn't pushed this flank. So I'm in fact still very, very safe on this flank. This is something that you need to keep track of. Uh, and note that the normal detection overwrites the plain detection. So if you're plain detected and normal detected, you will only see the normal detection. So, and now the Ognavoy actually pops up and he was going very, very wide on the flank instead of trying to sneak through the middle. So I have no worries about him whatsoever. And <laughs> amusingly, the guy who helps us out at the end is the Ognavoy greedily Good trying game, to torp the Yamato and <laughs> the Yamato finds that amusing as well and I give a couple of well done's because that Ognavoy just torpedoes his own teammate. Everything looks bright at this point. We have a fairly significant advantage. We managed to both their DDs, well one of the Ognavoy is basically useless and the DD inside the cap has died. So my presence here isn't really that needed. The question now is where do I actually want to go? Do I want to go and push and cap A? That will put me fairly out of position and once again a battleship going into the cap especially in a closed in cap like that is probably going to struggle to be very effective and we do in fact have a Zao who can probably just push in and take it quite easily and the Yamato is actually closer to the cap than I am and the Yamato has a burning need to basically get closer to the center as well because at this point he can't really shoot anything at all. So the question is where do I want to go then? Pushing center is tempting, but midway torpedo planes in the center, they're not actually that tempting. And more importantly, I want to get this Amagi away from this position. The other thing that worries me, if I do push into the center, and the carrier starts focusing me with those torpedo planes, am I going to be crossfired by the Borgogna and the Friedrich de Grosse on the other side? I do, however, want to get into a more aggressive position because I still have a lot of health remaining. I still have all my heals and I don't think that they can actually burst me down if I push into the center. So in order to create better crossfires, for example, like this Riga that's pushing up past these islands, I do try to decide to make the push. I'm not in a hurry. We got a ship advantage. We're about to get at least A, potentially even C. RNG decides Riga does not get any punishment, but ultimately I do think that pushing up is the better choice, especially since, since the Sean Bart next to me is also making the push. This, I don't have much of AA to defend against the carrier, but the Sean Bart on the other hand does have that French AA. And with our powers combined, we can maybe at least deter the carrier. Let's not pretend that we'll be able to stop him, absolutely not, but we can maybe deter him from just free farming us by both of us pushing together at the same time. If he hadn't pushed, I'd probably be a bit more hesitant. Um, I'd like to push into the center, but I'm not sure how ultimately aggressive I would be. What still worries me is this Borgogna. The Borgogna is pushing down that C flank and Borgogna's AP power is immense, especially against broadsides. Ultimately though, my goal is, what I'm actually aiming for here, is to put pressure on their carrier. Their carrier has positioned very aggressively up to the island, which means that he can send planes on a very short distance and harass us, uh, but it also means that he might be vulnerable to someone like me, deciding that this is a good moment to play aggressive and push up into them. And this is what you basically need to recognize. When is a good moment to go in? If you go in too early, you're just going to get yourself killed and be a liability. If you don't go in at all, or if you play too safe, well, then you're also going to be a, become an issue because, well, you're not helping the team enough. Our core force goes down, and this is where it's becoming really troublesome because this Borgogna is still occupied with the two ships there, but their healths are basically a sliver. So I need to do as much damage as I can to this guy with the help of the Sean Bart before he can start turning his guns towards me. Note that meanwhile the midway has in fact reversed and he's angling to sail towards the east which means away from me. The Ognevoy also gets spotted and he's actually moved back here. Instead of contesting the camp, he's moved back here to actually intercept me. So these two things, the fact that the midway is moving and that the Ognevoy is going for that interception means that I decide it's we need to change our course. If I keep sailing straight like this, not only will I give a, giving broadside to the Amagi and the Friedrich Rose and the Borgogna who might live, he actually goes down, but more importantly I make it very easy for the Ognaboy to torpedo me and if I do try to kill the Midway, well he, he'll already be sailing away from me. Instead we decide for the best option, which is angling nose in against all their ships. It's down to a 6 versus 6, so the game is by no means won at this point, uh, it can still go either way. So I decide to take the smartest choice. In this case, we're moving away from the Ognaboy, we're moving away from the torpedo threat, 
We are close enough that our AA starts harassing the planes the second they are launched, but more importantly, all the ships in front of me, you note how I've lined them up basically. I am perfectly angled against the Amagi, the Friede de Grosse, and the Saint Louis. The Saint Louis is of course going to be spamming HE at me, but more importantly, the AP threat from the other two is not going to be that significant. And more importantly, I'm also threatening to peek around the island at any point and blapping this midway. So the midway will be terrified at this point. Sean Bart is taking his damage, my Kagero goes down, and we're actually down a ship at this point. We're down to 5 versus 6, so I need to be very careful to make sure that this push works out. I start targeting the Amagi, because he's giving broadside, wanting to use his guns. And of course, Amagi at close range is a very, very good brawler. His turtleback means he's basically impossible to sit at a close range. I pushed up far enough to become the primary threat. My Sean Bart actually goes down behind me, but I pushed up far enough that they have to basically focus me because they are worried about me pushing around and killing the midway. So at this point we don't need to push anymore. Pushing any further than this doesn't actually benefit us in any way. There is no benefit. Also, trying to force myself to use the third turret, not a good idea. For some reason when people play the Izumo, they try to use the third turret far too much. They try to force it, they give too much broadside just to use it, and usually it means you end up eating a ton of extra damage. The midway decides it's time to rush, I zoom out to make sure I don't get any targeting bugs, and as the midway goes for me, I calmly aim for his nose, overmatch his nose, and citadel the midway, killing him off. This swings the points back in our favor. I'm looking behind me, where's the Yamato? Well, he's actually hiding miles behind us, and that's kind of a textbook example of what I said. Sitting too far back and kind of being left out of the action. Note, I don't want to waste volleys on a Fried de Grosse that is still angled towards me. He's not going to kill me anytime soon. He will be wanting to do either a drive-by or just doing some significant damage to me. I tried to use my third turret, but I'm hesitating. I think I'm just going to shoot one on the Saint Louis, and then I'm going to angle back in. The Zuma does absolutely have a citadel, and at close range you can absolutely be punched through it. So we only take it back the third turret shot on the cruiser, and then we start angling in on this Friedrich de Grossa. The closer he comes, the more damage he has to eat from the Zao. And once again, the HE spam isn't too terrifying as long as you spec fire prevention. A common mistake people make is not specking fire prevention or damage conning a single fire. One single fire ticking on me is not the end of the world. If I damage con it, I'm probably gonna be set on fire right away anyway, but even worse, if I get a double fire, then I'm in serious trouble if I not, cannot damage con it. Patience, patience. We know he wants to turn out, we know he wants to use all his guns, so we're not gonna panic and shoot too early. We zoom out once again to make sure we get that perfect volley, and once he turns out enough that we're guaranteed to arm our shells, only then do we shoot. In my opinion, patience is probably one of the cornerstones of good battleship playing. Taking your time, lining up that sweet shot, and only pulling the trigger then. Two fires are, are on me, hence the siren, but I actually don't want to use the damage con yet, because I do want to make sure that this St. Louis is dead, and we, we're not going to be set on permanent fire before I use it. So only once my volley was up, did I damage gone? There was a risk that that very last shell could have set me on fire, but there was no point in damage conning before that, because if his last volley does set like multiple fires, well then we might be burned to death. His torpedoes come out, but they are far too late. And just like that, with a time push, this flank kind of collapsed under that. And this was only a Baiji, basically an Izumo. I think an Izumo would have done better than the Baiji in that situation, because the faster reload and faster turtrevers would have been a lot more useful than longer range and 0.1 Sigma. I don't get the volley off, sadly, on the uh, destroyer. Someone else takes him, so no Kraken this game. Confederate, High Caliber, and Dreaddot. Damage rewards and tanking rewards. You don't, it's not always necessary to make that push in, but sometimes when you find the enemy mispositioned, like in this case, like in this case, all their forces were on one side and the carrier was kind of left alone on the other side. Which means that as long as I angle against all the ships on the east flank, I can push up straight towards the carrier and force them to start targeting me. Even if they don't particularly want to, I force them to do that, 
because otherwise the threat that I just go around the island and blow up their carrier is so huge. And that's a way to force the enemy. It's kind of like taunting them as a tank. Either they shoot you or they lose their most important vessel. 203, 204,000 damage actually. Team score wise, we 2.4 base XP, uh, 2.4k base XP. Could have been better. Um, then again, could have also been worse. This We had some issues with our carrier perhaps, not accomplishing so much. And a Yamato not really realizing that after he had secured that flank, he needed to get to the center as fast as he could. But he kind of lingered in the spawn and uh, that made that push significantly more dangerous. On the other hand, Arshan Bart did push up at the same time with us, which did help us significantly. Not something that will happen every time. But him pushing up was also one of the reasons why I originally pushed up, because I knew that combined AA might at least have some chance. Not much, but some chance. Detailed report-wise, secondaries actually did a bit. They didn't really shoot down any planes that mattered. I only shot down fighter planes. That is, of course, that IGN AA. But more importantly, 2.5 million potential. Even though we didn't tank much at the start, that push towards the end Caught, drew so much fire towards us that we ended up tanking 103,000 damage. This was another, another case of playing around the center, but with a small twist in the sense that once there was an opportunity for it, we pushed in to make sort of a deciding push to turn the game around. Some ships can do this well, some ships can do this extremely well. For example, the Kremlin is a ship that can play aggressive almost from the very start. And that's probably the next battleship I will be featuring in this commentary. Let me show you guys my recommended build for this ship. Right, as usual, let me start with the modules. Obviously, highly recommend running a spotter aircraft or a fighter plane. Not because you need the extra range. Trust me, you don't. But it's more important for shooting over islands uh, getting information around islands and of course blapping ships trying to hide in smokes. I have a whole smoke firing guide that is heavily focused on just battleships blapping ships in a smoke and if you haven't seen it I highly recommend it because it's an important skill for any battleship player to know. Upgrade wise turret survival mostly because this second survival the second turret on this huge barbette just like on the izuma well it's basically a izuma hull it's identical with very very small differences that's why i featured the baiji because everything that you do in the baiji you can do in an izuma 0.1 sigma isn't gonna be some sort of night and day difference like oh my god this is completely different uh just like a two second reload sh sh shorter on the on the izuma isn't gonna be a night and day difference either um Ultimately, any ships that have roughly over 20, 20 second reloads, they have that break where you get undetected and you can use that concealment window to figure out if anything is spotting you or not. Second module, tankiness, better dispersion, even more tankiness, concealment, and finally, faster gun reload. The captain build is my very, very standard battleship captain. Honestly, it, it is a bit disappointing how of, on how many different battleships I run this build, but... It works, so why not? Priority target, adrenaline rush, superintendent, fire prevention, to make sure you only have that one fire burning on the center of your ship. Concealment expert, followed up with adrenaline, oh sorry, expert loader, expert marksman, and jack of all trades for faster consumable cooldowns. Battleship flags, still exactly the same, which means reduced fires, reduced flooding, improved healing, improved speed, faster consumables. That's the basic five that you should be running on all BBs. Then you can add in things like AA and secondaries. I run detonation mostly because I want to record footage for, for videos, but on a, battleships, on a battleship, it's very, very rare that you actually detonate. Anyway, that was my Baiji example. We have moved on from understanding the value of the central positioning to trying to figure out when to push. And I'm going to be featuring some additional examples of this, especially Kremlin is a ship that is exceptionally good at pushing into the enemy team and just causing massive amounts of chaos. And that is really one of the things that you're doing. You're not just pushing in to deal damage, you're also pushing in to cause chaos and draw attention to yourself to give your team an opportunity to exploit that chaos. How that works out? Well, we'll see that next time. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it and have a great rest of the evening.